Good morning. Will God give a free pass to the cruel when he employs Babylon to chasten his people? Our reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 12 to 14. Then it will come to pass when 70 years are completed that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, says the Lord. And I will make it a perpetual desolation, so I will bring on that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, all that is written in this book which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will repay them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Just because God is using Babylon to chasten his people Israel doesn't mean Babylon gets a free pass to do whatever violence they want. They don't get to do whatever immorality they want. God has made it clear that all nations fall within his moral purview. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of all. What is right is everywhere right, and what is evil is everywhere evil. Yes, he's chosen Israel as his special people, but this means he holds them to a higher, not a lower, standard. Although he sometimes chastens them by the arms of pagan nations, he is not thereby choosing those pagan nations or their morality. He has chosen Israel. Now, for those of you who especially enjoy studying Bible prophecies, there's a lot of parallels between things in the book of Jeremiah and Revelation chapters 16 through 19. So keep that in mind. Next time you're in Revelation 16, 17, 18, and 19, you're going to see a lot of pieces there that start here. The literal pieces here in Jeremiah uh, become a spiritual application, a broader application, symbolic application over there in Revelation as we study end time events. Now, as far as what we have here, as usual, God's fairness is unchanging. It never changes. All will be judged based on what they've actually done. God rules over all. Morality is not relative. The book of Jeremiah is teaching us that God is the judge of all the world. He wants us to do right. He wants us to, to grow and learn and listen and become right. He wants us to embrace his righteousness, but he's, he's doing this in a way that doesn't take away our free choice. Our love of right and hatred of wrong, it mustn't be coerced, and God's not going to force us to agree. And so this demonstration of right and wrong is running its course out across the flow of history. We often call this idea the great controversy. Let's, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. We pray that we will be right. That the way that we'll be right is by embracing your ways. We'll find your ways in your word so, Lord, help us to be in the Bible day by day. Help us to be looking to become more like Jesus day by day. Show us, Lord, how to be right. And help us to just accept the authority of your word and act upon it in all that we do. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. So God will not give a free pass to Babylon or anyone else because he's totally fair. God be with you today in all that you do.